I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am Imti Chumla Kichu from Nagaland. And first of all, I would like to thank my Almighty God for giving me this wonderful opportunity and also Brother Nakin for this platform where I could share the Word of God. Today, I would like to talk on the topic, How is your faith in Christ as a believer? I repeat, How is your faith in Christ as a believer? Firstly, let us look into the meaning of faith. What is faith? Faith means complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Faith means complete trust or confidence in someone or something. What is having faith in God? Or do you have full faith in God? As a believer, if you ask your fellow believer, do you have faith in God? Their answer will be yes, I have faith in God. And when you ask them, how can you say that you have faith in God? Or, why do you have faith in God? They might reply as such, I have faith in God because I am born and brought up in a Christian family. I am a believer since I was born. I go to church every day. I meditate the word of God every day. I pray to God every day. Or I seek forgiveness to God every day. Their answer will be yes. I have faith in God. And when you ask them, how can you say that you have faith in God? Or, why do you have faith in God? They might reply as such, I have faith in God because I am born and brought up in a Christian family. I am a believer since I was born. I go to church every day. I meditate the word of God every day. I pray to God every day. Or I seek forgiveness to God every day. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, firstly I would like to tell you that you and me will know the true meaning of faith when we are put into certain situation or temptation. Let us cite some example from the Bible where we will understand the meaning of faith in a wider way. I will not be explaining the entire story but I'll be taking out certain points in which you and me will understand the meaning of faith in a wider way. Firstly, in Genesis chapter 22, we see the faith of Abraham being tested. We see that Abraham was very old by this time, and God has already blessed him with a son that he was longing for, and Abraham loved his son so much. In verse 2, we see that God told Abraham to sacrifice his one and only son whom he loved the most as a burning offering. If you and me were in place of Abraham, what would you do? Would you sacrifice something or a person whom you truly love or who is very dear to you and you will regret the rest of your life if you lose that person? Will you sacrifice that person as a burning offering? To God. Some of us might even question God if God tells us to sacrifice them. We might ask God, why did you even bless me with this person or why did you even bless me with this thing if you are to take this away as a burning offering? And some of us might even argue with God. But what we see here is Abraham without saying a single word, he obeyed God's command. Despite of all the sadness and all the grief he had deep inside his heart, he was ready to sacrifice his one and only son whom he loved the most. Seeing the obedience of Abraham and faith that Abraham had in the Lord, we see in verses 11 and 12 that the angel of the Lord called upon him from heaven and stopped him from what he was doing. And he told him, for I know that you fear God. Seeing the faith of Abraham in God, in verse 17 and 18, we see that God promised Abraham, saying he will bless his descendants with numerous as stars in the sky and also sand in the seashore. Not only that, but whole nation will be blessed through his descendants. Secondly, let us cite the example of the two thieves that was hanging on the cross along with Jesus Christ. 
At Kolkata, we see that Jesus was hanged on the cross along with two teeth. And the crowd, religious leaders, Roman soldiers, including the two teeth, started mocking at Jesus Christ. And we see that in Matthew chapter 27, verses 38 to 44. In the meantime, something strike on one of the teeth that was hanging on the cross with Jesus Christ, and that is fate. And we see that in Luke chapter 23, verse 40 to 41. He started to compare his life and the life of Jesus Christ. And he started to feel so guilty of whatever he have done throughout his life. Because throughout his life, whatever he did was he committed sin. He hurt people and he did nothing good for others. On the other hand, we see that Jesus Christ throughout his life, he helped people. He healed people. He shared the love of God with people and he always cared for others. He, the thief started to feel guilty of himself, of his deeds, that he committed his life unto a man dying next to him and that is Jesus Christ. Not because of anything. But it is because of the faith that he had on Jesus Christ that no matter what happened, the man dying next to me is the son of God. And he is the way, the truth and the life. And he can save me. If you and me were in the situation of that thief, would you sacrifice your life? Would you commit your life to a man dying next to you? Just like the thief did. On his last breath of his life, the thief seek forgiveness and said like this, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. To which Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. And we see that in Luke chapter 23 verse 42 to 43. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, There is no hour too late for fate. In life we will be put in such situation and temptation. We may be tested like Abraham was tested where we have to sacrifice something that we truly love. Or we might realize the love of God our Father late, just like the thief on the cross. What is your faith in Christ, my dear believers in Christ? Do you believe in Him just because you were born as a believer, you are born in a Christian family, you go to church every day, or you read the Bible every day, you seek forgiveness to God every day? Or is it because you really and truly have faith in Him? Thirdly, let us turn to Acts chapter 27. Here we see Apostle Paul, the greatest missionary of all times. As we go through this chapter, we learn that Paul was taken as a prisoner to Rome along with 276 people. In verse 7, we see that they started to face difficulty because of wind. The wind did not allow them to go into the direction they wanted to go. In verse 10, we see that Paul stood up and told the centurion, Man, I see that our voyage is going to be disastrous and bring great loss to the ship and carriage and to our life also. But since he was a prisoner, the centurion did not believe him. Further in verse 13, we see that a heavy storm started appearing slowly by slowly. The people tried their best to hold the ship, but they lost control. And in, in verse 20, we see that people started losing their hopes. They thought that they all died this very moment. They were left with nothing. When all the people was left with nothing, when all the people was left with no hope to be safe, Paul took this opportunity. He stood up and he told the people, Last night, an angel of God, whom I belong and whom I serve, stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, for God has graciously given you the life of all those who sail with you. And we see that in verse 21 to 24. Paul had full faith in God that no matter what happened, God will save him and also 
after 276 people sailing along with him in the same ship. Let us not put ourselves into the situation of Paul right here. But let us put ourselves into the situation that 276 people are facing. What would you do if you were in that place? As we all know that Paul has done great things throughout his life, but right now, at this very moment, he was a prisoner take, being taken to Rome. Would you believe what a prisoner tells you? The situation of the people those days seems to be very similar with the situation that we are facing today. During this very pandemic, people don't know what is going to happen next. We don't know whether we are going to get food the next day. Or we don't even know whether we will be able to meet our dear ones, our relatives who will stay very far away from us. People are in fear to get infected by this very coronavirus, which has no exact medical cure till today. And in such a situation, if a person like Paul, a prisoner, comes and tells you, the God whom I believe said that, he will save you and me. Will you believe in him? Will you believe a prisoner? My dear believers in Christ, the, your answer does not matter. But what matters here is, what is your faith in Christ? Soon after this pandemic started in the world, through social medias, we have seen many videos and also read many articles of many preachers prophesying that they have already prophesied about this very coronavirus. Some people say that this, is the, this will end soon. Some say that this will never end. On the other hand, some even prophesy that this is a, the way God shows his anchor up, upon us. And they even compare this situation with the flood during the days of Noah. And there are many other more prophecies. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, what matters the most here is, despite of all the news that we hear in and around, do you have faith in God? That no matter what happens, even though this coronavirus ends or not, God is always with me and he is there by my side helping me in every step that I take in life. As mentioned earlier, our faith will be tested in various situations. We may be tested like Abraham or the thief, or we might even be tested through sickness, through disease, through fame, wealth, hardship. Are you ready to stand up still and strong and overcome all the temptation that comes your way? As every one of us know Apostle Paul, he is the greatest missionary of all times. But he did not become the greatest missionary of all times just because of who he was, but because he was prayerful. He seek courage to God in every situation that he was put in. And most importantly, he was faithful enough to stand strong in every temptation he was put in, no matter if it was persecution, or it was hardship, or health issue. As a believer of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, let us have that full faith in God that no matter what happens, His plans are greater than ours, and He will never leave us or put us alone in such a situation with which will be very difficult for us to overcome. For the God who created us knows you and me better than we know ourselves. All God wants from us is to have that full faith in Him. I would like to end by reading this passage. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. It says, Now faith is confident in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. May God bless each and